I just want hey, to it's it. Kristen with Collision Hub, and we are back on Repair University for another episode of what I think I'm going to start calling this the Shop Talk series because mm -hmm. these are my favorite. There's not like a formalized show. We're just sitting around talking about maybe what's bugging us. Well, not what's bugging him. We're not allowed to talk about what's bugging him. <laughs> There's a lot of things uh, bugging him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, these shows are similar to what it looks like when we just sit around and talk anyway. Exactly. Yeah. If you so wanted to know well what it was like or, to know, hang out at Collision Hub, yeah. this is I it. still want to do a show on us here with three laptops on Facebook on Collision Repair Technicians United. Okay. Wait. So, I, oh, and just was, comment them while we're live doing it. I'm trying to remember. Somebody was, it was recently. We had a visitor here. We were doing a shoot for something else, and they pulled me aside and they showed me. Um, it's one of the auto magazines, and they make videos on YouTube, and they did a whole show of just reading the the rude comments people write about that on their Facebook videos or on their, on their YouTube videos. And I thought, we should do that. Yeah. We should just really just have a day where we pull oh, up. Oh, we got one guy we'll make famous. All the con all the comments people make on Facebook we, about. We, we can shoot that tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. We should where we just sit here and, okay, so it's, that's a, we're going to. That's another show. All right, that's another, another show. show. Yeah, That'll we'll be a special. Just, what do they call it? Mean text? Is mean it one text. of like Jimmy Kimmel or somebody does Jimmy that? Jimmy Kimmel does a great one. I mean, okay. this, I don't like Kimmel for political views, but the people he has on his show that read some of them are hilarious. And some yeah. of the ones that actually read were like really nasty about yeah. them. And the, the remarks from some of the stars is hilarious. Hilarious. Yeah, well, you're like one, stars you would never expect to curse. I'm trying person. to remember who, and I can't know why I've gone blank. But the whole purpose of them showing it to me was like we would love to watch a show where Larry just does nothing but read mean tweets about himself. And I was like, <laughs> I think it's more about me than him. But okay, we're gonna do a whole show. Well, I got a couple about me. Yeah, and if you would start commenting more, you know, yeah. would have more on do, you. And everybody goes, I disagree. It's like you're very shallow. Uh, yeah, you're very shallow. You know, you're, you're also I mean, inconsiderate. <laughs> we take all the okay. heat. All right, so. So if, uh, let's make a note. We're gonna do the. We're gonna kind of shoot maybe a, a mean text for shop talk thing. Yeah. So, but let's get to the topic of the day, which is aiming headlights. One of my favorites. Now the reason there's a two part reason why we decided to make this its own standalone show. One, we get a lot of comments online that are people are that just don't understand what aiming headlights means, and then I think we've both been surprised as we've dug deeper recently at what it actually takes to aim headlights these yeah. days. Well, I think it first started with a show last year that we did when, you know, Mark was tasked with looking up, you know, one procedure, which was aiming the headlights on a particular car. I had to do a different procedure, and the, you know, my procedure, it sounded like it was supposed to be more involved, was like five pages, and yours was like 25 I, pages. I just walked up and said, here's your book, and this is how we're going headlights. And it had that, you yeah. know, you had the full tank of gas, and this, and that, yeah. and, you know, and this was on a regular, you know, GM vehicle and yeah. stuff like that, not some highfalutin yep. Benz, Audi, Porsche. And, you know, it was really surprising. We saw a lot of comments on it and stuff. And, yep. you know, it's time we revisit Just a and couple talk about screws it. in a bracket, right? If the headlight fits well, you know, we and bolts in, But if we right. are an eye it, I hear this a lot. If we are an eye it, we put it back exactly where it came out of, do we still have to aim it? Well, no, you yeah. don't put it exactly where it was. Well, that's what they say. But see, here's the thing. So that, I think that was part of the understanding. So the mentality is when we think aiming headlight, we just think that it's pointed straight. Or we think of the old days when you'd put a headlight in and it'd look like this, you know, yep. or whatever. Okay, well, that's not what the OEs mean anymore well, when they say aim headlights. So there's a couple of different times when I may have to aim a headlight or, or will have to aim a headlight. Well, if I replace it, mm -hmm. if I R and I it, correct. And sometimes, depending on the car, if I disconnect the battery, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So, so I may not. I may be working on the rear of the car, but still have to have an aim headlight procedure. Uh, in and the some repair. cases, it's actually if you do a wheel alignment, they have to aim the headlights. Absolutely. You aim the headlights. Exactly. They have the turning headlights. Well, right. and sometimes when you replace the headlight, you have to do a wheel alignment. Right. right. Backwards. Yeah. So yeah. there's just, so we just can't say that I only have to think about this if I've done something with the headlight. We have to think about this based on our research, the OEM procedures. And this is why I recommend to shops that you stop choosing if it prompts you to or selecting it manually on your own, <laughs> aim headlamps. Yeah. yeah. It should no longer be that 0.5 because we calculated the other one with the GM car that we did was a hell of a lot longer than 0.5. I, I think we figured it was 1.9 hours to aim the headlight. Yeah, yeah. And, really, and that was not an exotic General Motors. Well, that was really just a to, basic you car. You know, just right. send it to the dealer and let the dealer do the aiming of it and stuff. The other thing I want to say is that 1.9 was actual, actual time. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. there was no. <laughs> there no, was, well, I mean, when we start to go through it, you know, so let, let's just kind of look at the things we'd have to do or what some manufacturers are saying. Right. Right. So, well, first and. and Let's, we'll just start here. We're in the estimating database, and we are in either headlight, and then we, it prompts us to say, aim lamps. I click that because we have to aim the lamps. What does that include? 
absolutely nothing because it's not defined, right? It's not. Right. We go to the P pages, what does it define? And I've actually contacted the database providers going, you know, what does that include? I mean, you gave us four tenths or five tenths, and I get it, you know, the old Suburban, if it had one headlight, 0.4, and if it has two, it's 0.5, I get it. But we got so many more things now that it's not defined as what it is, yet it says to, it's still saying 0.4 or 0.5, and I think we're going to probably see a change in that you know, coming up pretty quickly on what, what's in, just at least a definition. Because if you are putting a uh, wrench or a screwdriver or you know, a Torx bit onto there doing the actual adjustment, um, that may be sufficient. But all the other things that we're going to talk about here really aren't included. Right. I think I think you'll just see it disappear completely. Like a lot of other Could things be. that have it fallen out of the database should. over time. I mean, yep. there's some companies right. out there that actually have make you put a rail system on the floor mm -hmm. in your you know electronic calibration area. Yep. You actually have a rail system on the floor, and the, the the rail goes back and forth, so it's constantly set right. You know, it's on a level flat surface because it gets leveled out, yep. and then you line the car to it, yep. and the car only goes back by the distance of the type of vehicle you're aiming it with. Yep. And you, you work it off of that with the, with the system. Uh, some you need a, compu a, a proprietary computer system to actually aim yep. a line or actually get them to even turn on yep. and work. So let's be clear cases. here. When we say aim headlights, this isn't the old test that maybe you used to have to do to get your vehicle tag or whatever that showed that your headlights were aimed straight or right. weren't too high or weren't too right. whatever. This is almost a completely different thing because remember, we don't drive cars anymore, we drive rolling computers. computers yep. So there's a lot of things that I have to do before I even get to the headlight. Mark, what are some of those that are part of these procedures? Well, it depends on the car, but if you pull up and look at the headlight aiming procedure, n normally it's gonna say, check the air pressure on the door jam and fill and adjust the air pressure on all four tires on the ground. See, like one of those other shows I talked about, air pressure's the next hot topic air in this industry. I'm gonna make right. a stink out of yep. this. And then, <laughs> we have to look in the trunk to make sure there's nothing else other than what was provided by the manufacturer. The spare tire, the jack, but Which no, we know nothing some people else. have their cars loaded up with so much stuff, we can't get it all back in yep. the car. Well, <laughs> and we may want to tell the customer before they bring the car in, make sure your trunk's empty. And then the next thing is, we need a full tank of gas. Make sure they tell them to fill it up. In our test drive show, we talked a little bit about that. And then the next thing is we got to make sure we got to check the oil, make sure it's filled up to capacity, and the windshield washer fluid, it's filled to capacity, the coolant filled to capacity. Then we got to put the car on a level floor. How many shops have a level floor? Very rare. They well, have a flat well, floor, but they, they don't have they, a level they're floor. They're flat, but they're always not level. To drain. So the water drains. So now we have to level the car, and then we have to put it a certain distance back and aim it, and they're very specific on, you know, sometimes you print off a chart or something like that, and then you adjust the right front headlight. Oh, but before we do that, we gotta put somebody 150 pounds in the seat on some manufacturers. Right. So now we got two people during this whole operation, and we got uh, 150 pounds in the There's front seat. There's that one poor guy at your shop that's on a constant diet. Well, because. So that he can maintain the 150 pounds. I mean, pounds. if you think about I've it, how many shops. I've never been inside the car and studied it in my life. I'm always the guy who's gotta push it. <laughs> <laughs> Never got lucky with that. Well, you're not That's not that funny. Pounds. That's really you not that funny. At some it's point, but it's not a little scary. hurtful. I'll be honest, it's a little hurtful. It's pretty funny. I Trust mean, me. I, I, they're not asking me to sit in the car yeah. either. So then we have to make sure that there's somebody in the car, and then we have to adjust the right front headlight high beam and low beam on the right front. And they even say adjust the low, then cover it, but not with a towel because that might catch on fire. But, you know, you have fire to Fire safety, it. that's important. Right? Yeah. Well, I'm just telling you what it yeah. says. Then we have to go to left front. And that's how you aim the headlights, which is far different than the guy says, oh, I, j I aimed the headlights, it was just aimed off, I did it on my toolbox. Right. And that's a lot of what's going on. Yeah. You know, I, it's I, gone away, Because we though. still think that we're just looking for this, yeah. yep. in a well, way. Well, what's gone away is fog lamps. There's very few cars that have aimable fog lamps because most of them are LED. Yep. Something <laughs> incorporated in some sort of molding right. in the bottom of the, the bumper on a lot of cars yep. nowadays. So like, you don't have to aim the fog lamps because they're dead, dead set bolted on yep. and they're LEDs basically. The headlamps now are really a computer. I mean, some of these cars, not just the Germans have like, you know, they're heavy headlights to begin with they're, and they got motorized systems on exactly. them. Exactly. That literally, you look at a headlight now, it's no longer a headlight with a separate module. Mm. It's a headlight with like seven motors, four modules, and there's, if you don't rebuild it properly when you do it, it won't work properly. Well, right? on top of that, sometimes when you put the headlight in, it's electronic, and we have to actually register it. Yes. And then, before, after we've done that, we gotta set the 
steering angle sensor to match up with the headlights. So when we turn the steering wheel, the headlight turns you know where it's mm -hmm. supposed to, which means we have to do an alignment in the back to line up the steering angle sensor to the back wheels to actually do the headlight. So a minor headlight R and I could be a really big deal. Yeah, and on, if, especially on the I think it's the Mercedes. You unplug it and plug it back in. So you got to read that. Yeah, we got a relearning we process. You buy a new over. light with Mercedes Benz, and I think some of the BMWs and probably the Audis. Yep. I'd have to double check it, but I know definitely with Benz, you have to they're VIN coded. To mm -hmm. make it work, you have to VIN code it. And we, and we know from being in the classes with the guys, we've brought it up before and they found that they need to let the technicians know, and this will probably be in the procedure, there's like a little uh, uh, arm that when you switch over the motor, you sometimes leave it on the old headlight and then the motorized headlight movement won't work because you left that off and didn't realize it. And usually after you put the headlight together, you don't test everything. You throw the old headlight out, so, you put it, so it becomes a problem. This is where it's very important to look so at yeah, some of these no. I mean, we lights. went from a $200 headlight to some of them are $4,500. Oh days. yeah, they're ridiculous. But, but why? Why are headlights, why are they the way they are? And why does this re-aiming process some save of it, labor? It's safety, but some of them actually have cameras in them. Now in the old days, we used to think of a camera as actually going out, taking a picture so you can see it on a screen. Right. But think about the interactive cameras, like the alignment systems have, et cetera. They don't, the cameras are going out, actually creating a mapping of what's out there coming back. That, is, in some cases, is in the headlight. So now that completely affects the ADAS system as well. Right. For a it's, lot of the safety to work, the car has to see. So now we may have to do a headlight alignment when we disconnect the battery, along with all the other things that go I on. I mean, right. some of these higher-end cars, they, they no longer have high beams. You can force the high beams on, but it's only a flick of the switch. It's, well, it's the high a, beams are automatic anyway. So it goes by, you know, the, the yep. light sensor. Mm -hmm. um, so now it automatically turns off when light cars are coming at you. Like if you're in an area, rural area where there's not street lights like I have in New York or some of the other uh, major cities where you actually it's pitch black and you don't want to shine in somebody's eyes. You have the directional lights that go on and off. Mm -hmm. um, you have different weather type lights that will shine at different intensity depending if it's raining or not. So, you know, you're talking now, you have a computerized headlight assembly. Yep. It's not what it used to be. And, and listen, these lights are super, super strong. I mean, the amount of force you have to apply to break a headlamp lens is ridiculous. Oh, you, yeah. can, you can't break them that easily. Now, the brackets do break. And funny enough, a lot of these companies now are making a headlamp repair kit just for the brackets. Mm -hmm. At really the OEM this, level. At the OEM level. Yeah. Right. The, you, got, you, got the, you got this big, heavy headlight that's held on by usually three brackets. Right. That's it. Right. You know. These headlamps are doing a lot more than just illuminating the road. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so the driver does need to see. The driver does need to be able to see at a certain height. But or, you don't want to distance. affect other people driving towards right. you. Um, but but also you're setting that headlight because there's other systems on the car that need to see as well besides the driver. Yeah. So and I want to make sure that everybody understands that we're you know, we're talking about the high end headlight right now. Yeah. But in the 2012, 13, 14s. They still require the air pressure, the tank. Right. Even if they don't have a motor in it. Right. So this is just not and a high-end car. Around, this is a, that's you know, a general motor. Things turn around Nissan. fast now. This this Mercedes-Benz E-Class or S-Class headlamp that you've heard about, or the Seven Series headlamp, will be in some sort of like Chevy Cruze by 2022 probably. Yep. It's happening a lot faster. If it isn't already. If it isn't already in, in some of these cars already in these these low mile. So you really got to go back and look at these repair procedures, and you don't realize it. You know, you pick up a headlight and it's super lightweight. You got to assume there's no motors in it, but take a look at it but so look at the repair procedures you pick up a headlight and it's really heavy you better start looking at that yeah. headlight and say here's, hey, here's just a, a good rule of thumb if the oe took the time to write a procedure to aim the headlight there's probably some importance associated with that headlight right so which means that we probably should be because looking there's that not up. a process to aim my taillights so no. No. so if the oe took the time to write it you as a shop need to pay very, very close attention to that procedure. I yeah. don't know if I've seen a, a how to remove a taillight assembly <laughs> on a car that's more than a half a page and basically just written out, remove interior trim panel, <laughs> you know, un unbolt these three screws in the Newton meters or foot pounds at the Put some the tape stick. or the plunger on it. Pop and that's that it. I mean, out. you yeah. know, I, yeah. I don't see much for a taillight because it doesn't do much besides illuminate. Right. But headlights, headlights, Hold it and, and that's what I, you know. Always write things specifically in the U.S. You know, which is the reason why Hyundai's not here, because there's a safety reason that they felt there needed to be a procedure there. So let's yep. just, if for no other reason, call me later privately. We'll debate headlights all day long. But the OE wrote that procedure for a reason. Take it seriously, shops. Well, when the customer drops their car off, they don't say, "Yeah, just fix my car like we did 30, 40 years ago." 
I want you to follow everything the OEM manufacturer says. And did you do that? Right. Now, it doesn't, you know, again, if you want to charge 0.4 or 0.5, I'll be it for you. Yeah. However, you still have to do all those things. Right. So let's talk about um, how do how do we estimate this? So how, what's the process for that? Well, one we've we've pretty much agreed that that point four is worthless, and I think even the even the software companies like yeah we're not really even sure why that's we're in not there sure anymore. yeah right so so that's off the table mm -hmm. right we'll just take it the trash and throw it away. I'd be happy if they just deleted it out of the estimating systems altogether right now. This goes back to what we always say. This starts in the blueprinting process. So now I've looked at the car, and when I'm looking at the car, some of the first things we get off the car is the vehicle information, right? Then, and yeah. we get mileage, and oh wait, we get gas, right? Because mm -hmm. customers used to accuse us of, I brought it in with Still a full tank gas. of gas yep. or whatever, yeah. All right, so we get gas. So now right away, as the estimator, I know, am I gonna have to put gas in this car? Mm -hmm. Um, I can check fluids if I know I have a re-aiming procedure and go, oh, it's going to need a quart of oil, it's going to need whatever i got to do, it's going to need a tank of gas, it's got some other things. So those are charges now that can go on my estimate. Mm -hmm. And then I can read through the procedures and decide, what does this take? Is it specialized equipment? Do I have to have a rail system? Is it just being nine feet from a door and aiming it at a wall or whatever? How many people is involved? Do I need to go get Bob, the 150-pound wonder technician, to set in the seat? And then if I have two techs, one at the front and one guy sitting in the seat, what is the compensation for that? And then you can come to an agreement then what that time's going to be. Yep. And it may be a half an hour, but it may be 1.9. It may be four. <laughs> it may be four. It depends on what, yeah. what it is. Yeah. If you got one of those 20-page documents, it's probably you got some three things. to four hours that you you're got, going to be you working got some on things, yeah. And so then we have to talk about shops. And this going. is the big thing that's overlooked by, you know, when we, when we go into shops with Vico, we, we go in and, and this is what we demand, as opposed to just, oh, where, you know, did you get information on how to fix the car? Well, you're going to section the frame, you're all great, where are we going to section it? We want the battery disconnect procedure, we want the headlight aim procedure, we want, and you're going to have a book. Yep. You know, aiming headlights, it's a big deal. Um, there is no uniform time for it because no. it just depends on what the OE has. It's not the 1970s like you talk about in another show. Exactly. <laughs> it, it's something that has to be addressed, discussed, and determined during the blueprinting process. Yep. And those procedures get attached. The if I have a, an 18 wheeler with headlights that go in with a spring and two screws that are adjustable, I'm probably doing a point three to point five headlamp aiming off some flat wall inside my shop. Not such a big thing because it's of course procedure. the 18 they say wheelers how far shakes, back, right? you, know? you know. But some of these new 18 wheelers have these, different story. you know, oh. different type of electronic headlights. Same thing with a car. So we have you, more autonomous, heavy-duty trucks. Yes, than that, cars. that can be, you know, especially in Europe. So, so there's, I mean, there's technology and everything. That's just don't make any assumptions. Read the read and the manual. Pretty much anything autonomous. I mean, every, you know, if, if it's ADAS, I mean, we're yep. playing here. Yep. Exactly. Liability, huge liability. Yeah. So it's. It's definitely a charge. It needs to be on your estimate. You need to be able to document how you did it. You and need then to make even, sure and even it. if you don't charge for it, document it on the you'd record. have to have all those things like check air pressure, no charge. Fill up the gas, no charge. What I like Test is, drive, is no charge. I like I mean, just the all copy. The way down. Yep. You know, I, I like the fact that some of these estimating systems don't add lines or space for notes. So put in your notes section for that particular line, copy the, rep the, the process for the headlights yep. and put it in there, you know, a headlight to dealer for re-aiming or some whatever your some third party company comes is, in to do it for just you. Make sure Procedure includes but not limited to. I don't have time it. for that because I got a couple of estimates to rekey. Right. Oh, that's a whole different show. Oh, that's a whole different that show. Let's not get into that. That one I can't wait for. I can't wait for that show. All right, so let's just remember that aiming headlamps is not maybe what we thought it was. It's not what our history as 30 year technicians around headlamps or aiming headlamps is. We definitely got to decide at the blueprinting process. We definitely have to come to a determination for that charge, and we need to put that charge on the estimate because the technicians and the shops deserve compensation for you the work that it. they're doing. And you yep. got to do it, so there's no way around it. We'll see you next time on Repair University. Thank you.